So we've seen the process of forecasting and we've taken our first look at some time series. So now what we'll do is look at some simple ways to produce what are called benchmark forecasts, sometimes called naive benchmarks. So these are simple naive methods that we can use in order to get um, a forecast immediately that we can then use to check that any sophisticated methods we bring in are, are better than that benchmark. Um, so here we've got a time series. Um, don't worry about what this time series is. So we've got it, we've got it at the, um, the monthly level. Um, we can see that there's some trend in the blue line, which is our what we're calling our training data. So this is the data we're going to put into our model and project forward in time. Um, we can see there's some trend in there and there's possibly some seasonality. So we can see some peaks um, around um, sort of December time in, in the data, in the training data. Now from this point onwards, um, the blue line stops. So that's the end of our training data. And from that point forward, we've produced a forecast. Um, so the red line is what we call a point forecast. So it's a single number that comes out of a model that we say, this is our best estimate of what we think is going to happen on that particular month of 2020 or 2021. Um, however, it's not possible to actually forecast things exactly. So in a statistical view of forecasting, we also provide what's called a prediction interval. And a prediction interval is a range of values where we can give, we can give some sort of probability that the real observed value will lie within. So for example, here we've got a yellow shaded region and then outside that we've got a purple shaded region. So the yellow region is what's called an 80% prediction interval. And here we're saying with probability 80%, we expect our quantity of interest to fall between these values on these dates. And then the, the purple one is a 95% prediction interval. So here we've got a, a bigger statement about probability. So a wider range, we're saying with 95% probability, we expect our observed value to lie within this range. Um, now, what you should be able to see is that these forecasts, uh, the prediction intervals get wider over time. And that's because the further we go into fu the future, the more uncertain things become. And from, from a technical point of view, the bigger the errors are within your forecast model. So your errors accumulate the further you go into the future. So you need to have, particularly with a model with trend and seasonality, you need to have some sort of gradual widening of those prediction intervals. So this is an actual forecasting model. It's called seasonal naive. So what you should be able to see with this um, red line is that it's a repeating pattern. Um, so we're starting off here in January and this January is the same as the January in 2021. And the December in 2020 is the same as the December in 2021. Um, so it's a seasonal, it's a monthly seasonal pattern that repeats and actually it's the, it's the pattern from 2019. So seasonal naive has taken 2019's data and moved it into 2021 and then into 2022, um, sorry, in 2020 and 2021 and then gradually introduced and widened some prediction intervals around it. So that's just our first forecast, that's our benchmark. Um, and we would use that to check that any more sophisticated model we bring in is better than that ben benchmark. Now, I'm going to say that again and again because it's really important. And a lot of studies forget this simple step. You must have a simple baseline or benchmark forecast before you use any sophisticated methods. Um, so there's a number of benchmarks you could choose from. There's a chocolate box of uh, naive methods out there. Um, and it's important to use that because clever models perhaps aren't as clever as you think they are. Uh, indeed, I've run a number of studies where um, a clever model has been worse than a simple naive model. Um, so what I've written here is the burden is on you as a forecast analyst to prove your method, your chosen method is better than doing something really simple. So here's some, here are some classic naive approaches. Um, 
So naive forecast one is to take the previous observation and carry it forward. So if you're forecasting um, uh, seven days ahead, you take your, your last value that you've observed and you just extrapolate that into the future with no trend. So if your value is 10, the next seven values that you forecast are also 10. So you have what's called a flat forecast function. Uh, we've already seen seasonal naive, where this is a slight modification of naive one, where we're bringing forward the values from the previous uh, seasonal period. We could also introduce a trend into that using something called drift. Um, and that just, in, that just carries forward the simple, um, the simple trends that you've seen in the data. It's a bit like drawing a straight line from the start of the time series to the end, and you extend that off into the future. And we'll see how that works uh, in the practical. And then of course you could just take the mean of the time series um, and uh, just take the average, or you could take the average of the last week and you could extrapolate that into the future with daily data. So uh, you can do that to produce point forecasts fairly easily. Um, the trick is that uh, these are all st these are statistical models and you need to remember that any forecast should be accompanied by a prediction interval. Um, so there's just a little bit of maths needed in order to turn uh, to put a prediction interval around those point forecasts. Um, however, we've provided something for you to, to do that today.